Hey everybody, Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm inking this uh, Spawn fan art and I'm trying to do this off a relatively loose sketch. So I'll be using Tombow brush pens, Microns, uh, even a Uniball whiteout pen. Uh, I'm talking a little bit about the supplies and kind of the process in which I'm doing this and the uh, you know things I, I learned and thought about while doing this. So what inspired this particular video was I watched one uh, by David Finch. He's been producing some uh, amazing content on his channel. I suggest you check him out. Remember, he's on my featured channels list. So he did a video where he was drawing a character and he almost immediately went to inks and it pulled together really nice. And so I thought, wow, that's got to be such a great way to create when you can really get comfortable with that because you get art done faster, right? You're getting to the finished result faster. And if you could do it in a way where it doesn't show, like you're able to, I don't want to say cover up your mistakes in a sense, maybe that's part of it, but, and maybe another part of it is not really making as many mistakes because you're more confident what you do. But I think it's really an idea of that you let things happen organically and, and you shift it as you're going. Uh, so I guess you could consider it fixing your mistakes because there's whiteout involved. You're going to see I use some whiteout. I've definitely done this before where I've had to use more whiteout, things like that. But it's it's more or less allowing yourself to develop the artwork in a way that just your, lets your creativity thrive. So I always feel like traditional art gives you a better sense of a creativity, a more life to it. I've had people refer to that. Uh, and say that about my own artwork and I've seen him say that about other artists is that you know that's one of the reasons why they identify with traditional art. Uh, I think that there's a certain element to where because you can make a mistake that it becomes more precious right maybe your your line choices become more precious but I think in this way you kind of have to kind of let that go a little bit and just give in to you know maybe things not being exactly the way that you you know tend to put them down so for instance tensing up on the work okay so a lot of artists will tell you that you got to really try to not tense up too much especially you know if you render you can over render if you zoom in too much with digital art you can work on things that ultimately don't even get noticed in the end result so there, there's certain ways where you have to like let things be a little bit more organic uh, it's one of the reasons why i like using a brush so what i'm doing here is i'm blocking in the larger shadows with uh, a brush pen, a Tombow brush pen, dual brush tip. And it's it's kind of like very free flowing. It's a very big brush tip and you're just pulling down black ink pretty uh, quickly. So because of that, you tend to get you know a more organic feel to that. Now, if you lined out every bit of the shadow and you fill it in, you can get a similar effect, but you tend to almost see a difference even there. So with the brush pen, I drop it in rather heavily and then I sculpt into it and I so so I guess what I'm trying to say is I'll actually leave the black shadows pulled back a little bit from areas I tend to render and then if I go too far into the um, uh, the pointed areas I come back with whiteout so in this case I used a uniball uh, whiteout pen I mean right now I'm using the Tombow fine tip to do some of the uh, cross hatching uh, but I end up using a uniball whiteout pen and carving back into those white tips. Uh, so you'll see me do more of that. By the end of it, and I didn't capture all this because uh, I actually went back and revisited it. Yeah, there's the white out pen right there. And it's a good pen, but uh, there's another method as well that I wanna discuss with you. And so I end up using a Raphael brush and some Pro white out by the end of it, uh, just in the final touch-ups because it was more opaque. Uh, and with the brush pens themselves, or the pens themselves, I should say, I'm using the Tombow brush pens, two different sizes, and I'm using two different sizes of microns. So, you know, you might look at that and go, why are you doing that? You know, you could get away with just using one pen through the whole thing and just creating different lines. Well, I think what tends to happen is you get more texture and more variation from using these different methods. You know, it's a different sense of control with each one, and it shows through in the end result. So what I tend to think about is that I don't want all these different surfaces reading the same. I want them to be independent from one another, especially when it's something like, you know, the tattered up chain links versus his cape or even the marking on the chest. If you notice, everything has a little bit different rendering style from surface to surface. I think that's really important because you can get a very monotonous feel to the work if you render everything the exact same way. 
Now that's just my personal style, you know, take it as you will, you can do whatever you want. But that's why I use the different pens because it kind of aids me in that process. That coupled with the idea that if I'm rendering chains, I'm doing a lot of scribbling and little dots and just really just scribbling. I mean, I, sometimes I sit there and I noodle around and stuff and I'm like, this doesn't even make sense. But it, it separates from the other materials. And sometimes it's fun to just sit there and stipple shade and come up with a texture. Uh, in fact, I, I doodle all the time and you know, on like blank sheets of paper just to try to figure out different textures that I can use when I go to uh, do my illustrations here. And same thing with cross hatching. I try to vary up the way that I cross hatch throughout the piece so that again, it doesn't all read too, you know, too similarly. It's not so boring, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so I really enjoyed this process. So what you see me doing here is, is sketching again with the 2H uh, lead holder, two millimeter lead holder, and I'm using 2H lead in it. And I'm just sketching in the basic shapes of the, the hand and the fire. And that's it. And instead of soft erasing and redrawing probably two times, which is what I normally would have did to tighten up the work, uh, I just jump in and start inking it. And I'll tell you, it was a lot faster. So this piece took me just under four hours. And it's not like it should have took that long anyways. Like it's a head and bust. It's not a very detailed shot. But four hours for pencil and ink is still actually pretty good for, uh, for me. So yeah, I'm, I'm still relatively happy with it. Uh, and you guys can be the judge, you know, feel free to critique the work. Obviously, I'm messing up on the hand here like I tend to do. Uh, but then I, I ultimately go back to where I, pretty much where I started and then I jump into inking it. Um, and here I'm using, again, the Tombow brush pen. And just keep in mind, I'm going to link everything in the description box below so that you know what supplies I used. If you want to pick up the same supplies, cool. But just remember, it's never the pens. I mean, they definitely help. Uh, you just want to try a variety of them and see which ones feel right to you because I've definitely tried pens where a certain artist that I admired you know whether it be Jim Lee, David Finch, Todd McFarlane you know they might they might mention their supplies and then you go to try them and some of them feel great and some of them are like wow I can't get the hang of this they must be better at using it obviously so or are they just diff have a different feeling to the way that they create so you, you got to try these different tools on your own see what you think uh, but I really like blocking the shadows with this big brush pen. It's it's fast, and I think it has like a nice organic, natural feel to it. And again, think like a painter. You know, block it in and then sculpt into it. Now back to the whiteout thing, because I think another part of this is if you tense up and you feel like, oh my God, I'm making a mistake and I'm going to ruin this, then you might ruin it, right? Fear leads to mistakes and anxiety and all that. So you got to kind of let go a little bit and just say, well, how could I fix this if I do mess up? Or you could have a Bob Ross moment and it could be a happy little accident. But that's where Whiteout really comes in and saves the day. And one of the ones that I discovered right after this, and again, I gotta give credit to David Finch for mentioning this. Uh, it was a Presto Whiteout pen, and I wanna say I saw Jim Lee using it too. And uh, so it's funny, you know, I've seen the pen around and it's like I didn't try it, all of a sudden I got one. Like I said, I got it after this piece, so I don't I don't show it here, but it would have came in insanely handy for this particular piece. What it tends to do, it lays down a very heavy uh, bulk of whiteout, but it's it's workable. You can actually go back and render cross hatching over top of it again. So that's a just a huge you know stress reduction, right? Knowing that you could actually white out a certain area and come back and render over top. So it makes something like this a lot more conducive. So I really recommend that one. Again, I'll make sure it's in the link below. Uh, but it's it's finding these you know these tips and these tools, and I want to mention that as well. So another thing that um, David Finch had mentioned in one of his videos was something that I heard, uh, or I don't think I heard it before, but it made sense when he said it was, "When in doubt, black it out." So that's a, a, a term from Molly Woods, and just. A really good gem of advice right so you get to these certain areas of your work and you're looking at it and going I don't know something's not right what, what, I, what should I do and it's like when in doubt black it out right and I think that's a really good one like I thought about that a couple times in this piece and uh, one of the areas you can't see it right now but at the lower portion of his forearm you'll see that by the time I show this artwork there's some cross hatching there that I that I blocked out because it wasn't making sense it was actually contradicting the uh, the light to dark that you should do. So it should be like, 
you know, light, shadow, light, shadow. They're usually side by side, right? As you work through a uh, form and as you create uh, depth in the in a shot, even as simple as this, you really want to be aware of that. It's just kind of like one of those little fundamental rules. And so the cross hatching was actually interfering with it. Uh, so again, all these little gems of advice, I really recommend you watch his channel, Jim Lee's, Todd McFarlane does some stuff on Facebook. These guys just talk about their process and you end up walking away as a more knowledgeable, accomplished artist because of it. So powerful. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's content. I'd love to know what you think in the comment section below. More is on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.